So courtesy, the American government has tried to give Ken an extra little chance here by having a government shutdown and changing the stages we're going to run. What I'm really curious about, people with so much experience, what have you done, 250 rallies or so? Yeah, I don't, I don't know how many I've done, but there's, there's a lot anyway. So when you're rallying now, how much are you able to adjust your notes? And are you planning to do a lot of adjustment to your notes as we're rerunning stages here this weekend? Yeah, obviously we make our own notes, unlike most of the people here that use um, Gemba system and then they, they modify them. So obviously we just had a single pass recce, but the great thing for this rally is because the recce finished so early, we've had an awful lot of time to go through things on the video and amend as much as we can. But one, one of Craig's biggest strengths is in the rally car. He's absolutely fantastic at changing notes on the go. So if we're going into something, we need to change it. He's on the ball. You can do that very, very easy. So... So we've had all this build up, David, about how it's going to be a maximum attack fight. But it sounds like it might not be the case because it's pretty sketchy out there. Yeah, I think the conditions have caught us all by surprise a little bit. The first um, stages obviously around the gravel pit were were reasonably good conditions, but the problem we had there was um, we hadn't wrecked them, so it was nothing like the video, well, not nothing like, but the video that we looked at didn't really represent what we were doing when we did it at speed. So that was a bit of a shocker. Um, we lost the sump shield on the, the, the second pass through, but then when we went into the, the, um, the last stage, Menji, it was just like super slick everywhere, like aqua playing across. It was just like almost snow drift, but at higher speeds without the snow bank. So it was pretty tough, but it, it, at the same time, it was actually quite good fun and enjoyed it and slipping around and it felt very much like being at home. Tell me about losing the sump shield. Did you have to drive slower or taking that into account the last stage we've just driven? If there's that, then that means there's no protection under the engine, right? Yeah, no, it's... Um, Thankfully, it wasn't too rough of a stage, um, but you can't afford, like, we, we can't afford to go out there and, and back off for things like that happen. We just got to keep pushing all the time, so um, it, it, it was more of a conscious thing than, a, than an actual, um, like, when they've got some big rocks, obviously, you're trying to avoid them a bit more, but there was more, more things like trees and banks and everything else to avoid rather than the rocks out there. Tell us one more time, we talked to you about this at 100 Acre Wood. How do you like night driving? How do you think that suits you? I actually really like the night driving and um, going on the last couple of rallies when we've been running in the dust in the dark, our actual times have been very competitive. So it's, um, it's at the end of the day, we're all professional guys here and we're, we're all used to doing it. So I don't think anyone has a real advantage on everything. I think the key to this rally is we can't afford to make mistakes. You're going to have to keep, although it's a sprint, we, the conditions have made it now that you could, you could spin, like you could lock up, you can stall the engine. There's a lot of time that can be lost by making mistakes and the real big key is going to be although we're using the same stage over and over again the condition is going to be so different each time it's going to be reacting with the engineers and making sure you make the small little tweaks and make that little bit of a difference i think that's going to be the big key So we're standing here day two, Lake Superior Rally, with the overall leader. We could not have planned a more interesting rally if we tried. David Higgins, in the set of the last three stages last night, pulled back a lot of time Ken had been taking throughout the rally. What did that take to come back last night in the dark, in the fog? Um, to be honest, the, the day started off pretty good and we were sort of matching times and doing the same. Then we took a few tens, so, but then we took a narrower tire choice and that really was what set us back. It, it didn't really work too good. We went back to the, the wider tyre and just sort of had to dig real deep because we, we knew we were eight seconds out at that point and we couldn't afford to do that. So when we went out in that one, it was it was dark, it was it was foggy, it was wet and slippy, just like back home. So we decided that was our time to really attack. You speak about back home. Would you say the stages in Wales and a lot of your experience in England is really helping you here today? Um, yes and no. Like obviously the, we drive in these sort of conditions at the rally school a lot, but I haven't actually done a rally in the UK since 2008. So Ken's probably done Rally GB much more recently than me. So he's got the same experience of these things. But I think the, the biggest factor for us is we've had so much of this year being stuck in the dust and moaning about being driving in the dust. Fog is just the same. You can't see, but you've got to put that trust in it. And I think we really sort of used that practice last night to the best. We look forward to seeing you at service number one today. Have fun, David. Thank you.
Okay, it's the first service, day two, Lake Superior. The guys are deep in the battle right now. Craig, how were those first two stages? Oh uh, yeah, they're pretty good. They weren't as slippy as we were expecting, which was nice. Um, definitely not as slippy as the first runs over those stages yesterday. Um, but <laughs> I think the battle's resumed today as it did yesterday. It's nip and tuck, a few seconds here, a few seconds there, and I think that's going to set the tone for the rest of the day. I'm standing here with your 2013 champion, David Higgins. He still needs to finish this rally, but it looks like points means you're now the champion since Ken Block has had some trouble on stage. Yeah, we're all um, confirmed champion now. We don't actually have to finish, but we want to finish now to obviously bring home the win. So it's been an absolute incredible battle this weekend and the whole year has been a big fight from Ken coming back from his problems at the start of the year us having ours, but this was really, really good for us because we were leading at the time when it happened as well, which um, last night we sort of really stepped it up a little bit in the dark to try and turn that deficit that we, we had and got in a bit of a lead and then today was a case of just still having to go absolutely crazy and we lost a little bit on the first two this morning, which I wasn't too happy about, but the, the, the one after that we went out there real crazy hard and you know, there was a couple of places where I didn't think we were going to get round and Ken was saying he was following my breaking mark so I hope he wasn't following all of them because <laughs> it was pretty crazy times but super pleased for the team you know to win three championships in a row with that car just shows what a fantastic team we've got behind us with Subaru and Vermont sports car. Superior 2013, David Higgins and Craig Drew.